Yep, here's our turtle. And it does look like we are in time for this sea turtle to have a chance. Getting these guys through and back into the ocean is critical. Oh, poor little turtle. All right, guys, we just got the call. We are on a sea turtle rescue mission. And right now there's a turtle on a beach about 15 miles north from here and needs our help. These sea turtles, when they end up beach, it's because they're distressed and they can no longer swim. And without programs like the one we're participating in, they would all certainly die. So needless to say, this sea turtle right now, its life depends on us. Just this past year alone, more than 850 sea turtles were rescued off the shores of Massachusetts, a number that has been sadly increasing. Endangered sea turtles like the Kemp's Ridley, Green, and Loggerhead are washing up on beaches due to cold stunning, and the changing climate is only making matters worse. I think I see it. Yep, here's our turtle. A volunteer was combing this beach, and they discovered this Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. And this is exactly what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to take the turtles off of the beach, away from the wind. And then you can see it was covered here with this bit of straw to protect it from exposure. And it does look like we are in time for this sea turtle to have a chance because you can see it still has a little bit of strength in its neck, just enough to pick up its head. And that is a very good sign because most of the turtles that you find that are cold sun cannot move whatsoever. So let's bundle this little turtle up and take it to the Wellfleet Sanctuary where it will start its process of rehabilitation and hopeful re-release back into the wild. Rapidly fluctuating sea temperatures due to climate change are narrowing the window for these turtles to safely migrate south each year. Rising sea temperatures are holding the turtles in northern waters for too long, and any sudden drop in water temperature below 50 degrees results in a mass cold stunning event for these marine reptiles. We have to be super quiet because these turtles are already really stressed and loud noises have been proven to stress them even further. Oh, poor little, poor little turtle. We did notice that it had a bit of a response when we picked it up off the beach. Like it, it had some yeah. ability to raise its head. So that's pretty rare, honestly. A lot of the time these turtles are barely moving at all. Sometimes we'll think a turtle's dead and we'll leave it overnight to assess in the morning to make sure that it's still alive. Yeah. Cool. Um, is this our turtle? This is our turtle. All right, how do we know that this turtle isn't dead? So when we first bring it onto this processing table, we will check to see if its flippers are in rigor. Rigor is short for rigor mortis. When an animal dies, it starts to seize up and all of its joints and body parts become stiff. So there was slight movement right there. Saw that. Yep, we'll kind of gently tug on their back flippers and then we'll touch their eye for a small eye response as well. And then what we'll do is we will actually use this pit tag scanner here because sometimes these turtles wash in and they have been tagged and no tag was detected here. Then the next thing we'll do is we will take measurements of its carapace. We will look to see if there are any um, injuries on the turtle anywhere, sometimes from pecking from seagulls if they've been sitting on the beach for a while. Um, and then they'll sometimes have some wounds on their carapace. And, and that's why it's so important to get these turtles off the beach. Yes as quickly as possible. Each animal receives a number upon entry to the Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary. And of the four sea turtles we assisted in rescuing, number 569 was the first to be sent for urgent care. You're on your way, bud. So we quickly mobilized and followed it to the New England Aquarium's Sea Turtle Hospital. Look at all these turtles. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Let's go, guys. All right, here we are at the Sea Turtle Hospital. Let's go inside to see our Kemp's Ridley start its rehabilitation process. Come on this way. All right, how's it going, Adam? Thanks Good. for having us. Thank you for coming. So are these our turtles? Is the, that? These are yeah. our turtles and you have 569 and the Kemp's are very similar looking. And as you'll see, there's a lots of turtles everywhere. And once they get into the water, they look even more similar. So we'll bring them up. We'll put a number on their shell and we put a band around their flipper. So that way when we're looking for certain turtles, especially when they're in the water, they'll be easier to find. Awesome. Now we're gonna try to listen to see what the heart rate sounds oh, like. cool. And their metabolism at this rate is very slow. Extremely slow. And that's slow. why you need these special instruments to be able to read that. We're listening for the turtle's heartbeat. So far, I just hear static. Oh, I think I just heard a whoosh. So this, this turtle's significantly lower heart rate than it's going to be when it leaves. Exactly, okay. yeah. So with that, we will give it a dose of epinephrine that will help get that heart rate a little bit up there and a little bit more prepped for a swim. So this is like the jump start for the rehabilitation process here at the hospital. 
Once a sea turtle receives epinephrine, it is then placed in a small pool of water for observation. Also called a swim test, this is where the clinical team will look for signs of other damage and possible infections. Let's see how 569 does. So that's a great sign, obviously, that nice little breath there. And turtle's going into the water. And so, yeah, I mean, he's ready to go. That. For these turtles, freshwater is important because of the dehydration piece. Mm. It helps rehydrate them. One or two days in that fresh water won't be detrimental, and then they're into the full salt water tanks. These turtles have been out there breathing in cold air, water, so we see a lot of pneumonia. So you can kind of see it's slowing down a little bit there. Okay. We also Buddy. see how high in the water he is, so he's, he's definitely got some gas in his system there that's keeping him very floaty. As you can see, and he has some odd coloration in those front flippers, so he may have some skin issues that over the next few days as he warms up might become a little bit more prevalent. So I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Adam, but in your professional experience, how would you say our turtle here, number 569, is looking in terms of its potential for rehabilitation? Yeah, no, the prognosis for this turtle at this point would be good. I saw some bubbles coming out of the, okay. the nares, the nose. Then you saw him lift his head and took a nice breath. So that's all great things. Love it. That is so great to hear. And it's so nice to see the turtle lively again. I feel like most people who would encounter one of these cold stun turtles on the beach might even think they were already dead. But sure enough, here at the hospital, after a little shot of epinephrine and a chance to swim, we've got a lot of movement. All right, so now that our turtle has swam for the first time at the hospital, part of the rehabilitation process of warming them back up to the appropriate temperature, which is about 72 degrees, takes a few days. After treating nearly 5,000 turtles, this facility has learned quite a bit about how to bring the temperature back up in the appropriate way. And the best way they found to do it is a stage process over days using multiple tanks. Over the next two days, they will actually be placed in the salt water baths that will raise them up to about 65 degrees and then eventually up to the 72 degrees that you'll see here in the holding tanks. These turtles here, they're already being raised up to temperature. Pretty cool and definitely something that really helps these turtles stand a chance of being re-released. Along with being critically endangered, the Kemp's Ridley is also the rarest sea turtle on the planet. Once abundant, their population suffered a massive crash in the 1980s, where as few as 250 nesting females were estimated to remain. Luckily for the world's smallest and rarest sea turtle, large-scale conservation efforts helped restore their population to stability by the mid-2000s. However, with current climate trends being as they are, the pressure is now back on to save this species from extinction. I've heard reports that the Kemp's Ridley are somewhere in the population of 30 to 40,000 individuals in the world. Is that is that what you've heard also? They are a critically endangered population. So, I mean, the fact that you're seeing thousands of turtles come to the facility, this is a, a significant mass yes. of this species. You're getting these guys through and back into the ocean is critical. Well, this is not the end of the road for the video, guys. We actually have one more step that we want to show you as part of this turtle rehabilitation program. This one, though, is going to take us on a short trip to the airport. So as you can see, we are no longer in the Sea Turtle Hospital. We are in an air hangar because there's an amazing volunteer program called Turtles Fly 2 that takes these sea turtles down to warmer waters in the southern United States where they will finish their rehabilitation and be released back into the wild much sooner than Mother Nature would allow here in New England. And we just got word that the turtles will arrive, so it's time to get to work and load up these sea turtles. All right, so you have a van load and a truck load full of sea turtles that are being loaded up by volunteers and aquarium staff onto this aircraft right now. They're trying to set a record today by loading 100 sea turtles onto this airplane. That's a lot of reptiles. So right now the pilot and the co-pilot are up there playing a little bit of turtle Tetris to try to get all of these animals loaded up onto this aircraft. It takes a lot of resources to fly these turtles, so they wanna make sure every flight is efficient and as productive as they can. Trying to get one more up there? Yeah, I think they have a little shorter banana box. Okay. Nice. Oh, there's more turtles. <laughs> there's always more turtles. <laughs> Last one. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. All right, got the, uh, the final turtle box to load into the aircraft. Last one. Something I never thought I would say. Turtles on an airplane. But here in New England, it happens about a dozen times a year. 
That's cool. The turtles that make the flight to Florida are the ones ready to be released back into the wild. But others needing more long-term rehabilitation, like our friend 569, will continue to receive care at the Sea Turtle Hospital until they are ready to be released when spring returns to New England. Researchers have predicted that by 2031, just eight years from this video's release, thousands of cold-stunned sea turtles will wash up on New England shores every single year. It takes an amazing collaboration to combat these events and return healthy sea turtles into the ocean to rejoin their populations. From emergency veterinarians, to airplane pilots, to hundreds of beachcombing volunteers, I was so proud to play a small part in saving these rare and endangered animals. But the work continues every single day from the cold shores of Cape Cod to the warm waters of South Florida. And these wildlife heroes need our support. Please join Brave Wilderness in the New England Aquarium by clicking the link in the description to donate, spread awareness, or perhaps volunteer yourself in the effort to save these beloved treasures of our oceans.